Shine. 
heard about this baby boy who's come to earth to bring us joy. And I just want to sing this song to you. It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, with every breath I'm singing, hallelujah.
I have traveled many moonless nights, cold and weary, with the baby inside, and I wonder what I've done. Holy Father. I am waiting in a silent prayer. I am frightened by the Lord I bear in a world as cold as stone. Must I walk this? Do you wonder as you watch my face if a wise one should have had my Breath of
such a gift to have you be a part of this observance of the holiest night of the year uh, here at Campbell United Methodist Church. Welcome to our 7 p.m. Christmas Eve service. My name is Daniel Hilty. I am grateful uh, to get to be one of the pastors here at Campbell. I'm grateful uh, for uh, Renee and Jason and the whole uh, worship band that has uh, got us off to such a meaningful start tonight. We are grateful to the Lord for you, especially if you are a guest here this evening. Uh, thank you for including Campbell as part of your Christmas Eve observances. Uh, we give thanks to God for you, and we, we hope that this is a blessing for you tonight as we welcome Christ into the world and into our lives. I'd like to ask if you would to please pray with me. Let's pray. Oh God, this is no ordinary night. Help us in these moments to receive your spirit, stillness and quiet and humility, and the smallness of a child. Help us, O oh Lord, to receive you not just in these holy days, but in all of our days to come, that we may serve this child who has come into the world in faith and hope and love all of our days. We pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite us to stand as we're able, please, to rise in body or spirit for our opening uh, song. You'll find it uh, on the screen. It came upon the midnight clear. <laughs> upon the midnight clear that song of old from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold peace on the earth goodwill to all from heaven's all gracious King the world in song stillness lay to hear the angels sing still through the cloven skies they come with the wings unfurled and still their heavenly music floats or all the Sad and lowly plains, they bend on hovering waves, and ever over its battle sounds, the blessed angels sing. For lo, the days are hastening on. circling years shall come the time for toll when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendor sleep and the whole world send back the song which now the angels sing seated.
Tonight, we gather together and light a candle in honor of the Christ child. With the birth of Christ, salvation has drawn near. The God who brought order to the chaos of the universe has come down to the chaos of our world. The word which was with God at the beginning came down and lived with us. While we're yet living in the valley of the shadow of death, the light of new life burst forth. Tonight, we humbly and gratefully approach God's light of the world, assured that each one of us, no matter our quirks, our messes, our hurts, each one of us is welcome in the presence of our Savior, Jesus. We light this candle for Christ. Please pray with me. Light of the world, promised Messiah, hope eternal, prince of peace, love everlasting, infuse our hearts with the warmth of your presence. We come at your invitation to seek and find you, the good news of great joy for all the world. Tonight, we come to you tonight of all nights to marvel at your gift of love lavished on the world and yet wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a ma simple manger. Thank you for your gracious invitation and for all to come to you, just as we are. Thank you for welcoming us to experience your abundant light shine in our hearts so that we carry your light out into the world. In Jesus' name, we gratefully pray. Amen. Thank you, Russell and Nikki. I just wanted to say something to everybody. Merry Christmas. We're going to sing something a little bit raucous right now, okay? I hope that's all right. We're going to share some joy. And so if you feel like tapping your hands or clapping your hands or tapping your feet, please feel free to do that while we sing. My hope is in Jesus. My hope is in Jesus and in his love. My hope is lying in a manger with a shining star above. Is not in this world or in this place. My hope is found shining in the light of baby Jesus' face. Don't make me ruler or king or the owner of things that would hold me with an idol sway. Don't give me silver or gold or riches untold. Take me home by another. And his only son born on Christmas Day. My hope is a major led by the light. My hope is humble like a savior, baby, sleeping in the night. Don't leave me lost in a land in the devil's command. Let me learn how to stand for truth. Let there be peace on the earth from a virgin birth. 
change the world we know today. joy to be together in worship tonight, and it is a special joy to see each one of you here, each one of your faces, and that we get to be in the presence of God on this very holy evening. And this is a God who hears us, and a God who listens, and we have come to the time in our service where we are going to uh, offer a prayer to God. And I know that you probably have some joys and concerns in your own hearts, on your own mind, so... Uh, know that there is a moment in the prayer where we will have a chance that you can speak those. You can either speak them in your mind or you can speak them aloud if you want. And also know that you are invited to join us at the chancel rail if you would like to come up and kneel during the prayer. We'd be most welcome to do that. But before we go to God in prayer, please join us in the singing of our song of Centering What Child Is This? What child is this who to rest on Mary's lap? Is sleeping who angels greet with anthems sleep while shepherds watch with me. Gracious and loving God, light of the world, breath of life, in you is the hope of the world. Prepare us tonight to hear once again the message of the angels. Take us in heart and in mind, as it were, to Bethlehem to see this thing that has come to pass. Bring us to adore this newborn baby wrapped in his mother's arms, for he our sa is our Savior and is God with us. Help us to treasure all these things in our hearts. As we hear your word read tonight, help us to hear your loving purpose. You sent this holy child, Jesus, to rescue your people from disobedience and to bring them into glorious redemption. This wonderful and saving love is offered to each one of us. Because of this baby, this light of the world, we are able to approach you, which we do tonight 
asking you to forgive us for pain we may cause, decisions that separate us from you, and for ways our actions and words grieve your heart. God, we pray especially that your compassionate love is felt by those here this day who have drifted away and those who need to hear your voice, inviting them to come and see this mysterious and wonderful gift. Fill our hearts with hope, peace, joy, and love. May our voices fill this space with glad praises. Fill us with the desire to praise you for all we have seen and heard of your amazing love. God, we pray for the needs of the world, for peace on earth and goodwill over all the earth, for unity and fellowship within the church Jesus came to build. At this time, we remember the poor and the helpless, the cold, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick in body and in mind, and those who mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, and all who do not know the Lord Jesus. We also pray for those connected to this church family who have asked us to remember them in prayer. God, you know exactly what they need the most. Please help them to experience your healing presence. Give them strength and rest, encouragement and peace, community and support. We thank you, God, for the community of faith, for a safe place to come just as we are and to encounter your grace. We thank you for a place to hear your word teach us, challenge us, nurture us, and help us to grow. God, each of us also has joys or concerns in our hearts and on our minds. In these next few moments now, we entrust those to your care as we speak them, either loud or in our hearts. These prayers and praises we humbly offer up to you. And in the words which Christ himself taught us, we pray this prayer together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass. And it is not the temptation to deliver us from the divine kingdom, the power, and the glory of God. As we prepare our hearts to hear the word and to receive the Christmas message, we're going to sing one more song of jubilation and joy. So would you celebrate with me by raising to your feet as you're able and singing the song called Joy, He Shall Reign. <laughs> Rejoice, our King is here. Men of earth and angels cheer. Glory bright before our eyes. Majesty in a manger lies. Oh, joy to the world, to the world. The Lord is come. Joy to the world, to the world. God sent His Son. Go. Is gone. 
see the shepherds bowing down. Wise men offer him their crown. From then to now and far beyond. We stand and join in the endless song. Oh, joy to the world, to the world. The Lord is come. Joy to the world, to the world. God sent his son. Go tell the world, tell the world, tell everyone. Joy to the world, to the world. The Lord is come. shall reign forever and ever. He shall reign forever and ever. He shall reign forever and ever. Joy to the world. Joy to the world, to the world. The Lord is come. Joy to the world, to the world. God sent his son, go tell the world, tell the world, tell everyone joy to the world, to the world. The Lord is joy to the world, to the world. The Lord is come, joy to the world, to the world. God sent his son, go tell the world, tell the world, tell everyone joy to the So thankful for our worship band and the ways that they lead us tonight in our Christmas Eve service. Uh, I want to let you know that uh, we are having another uh, service tomorrow morning. Christmas, of course, this year falls on a Sunday, and so we are having our normal Sunday worship, sort of. We're not having two services like normal tomorrow morning. It's just one service at 10 a.m., but we would love to see you at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. It's going to be a brief service. It's kind of a casual service, and uh, as is a... Uh, a long-standing tradition, at least in my mind, uh, it's going to be a come-as-you-are service whenever Christmas falls on Sunday, which means you want to come in your pajamas, you can just come in your pajamas, church appropriate, of course, but we'd love to see you tomorrow morning. I'm going to be in my Santa onesie, so I hope to see you here tomorrow morning as well. Um, I also want to say, speaking of come-as-you-are, just how grateful uh, we are to have each of you here tonight. I I'm aware, especially on a Christmas Eve night, that we come from a lot of different places in life, don't we? We come from a lot of different pathways and journeys, and we're bringing a lot of different emotions and experiences to this holy night, looking for something, hungry for something, wanting a, a sign of, of Christ doing something new in our world and in our lives. Maybe some of us are here tonight, and we're just like, you know, Buddy the Elf. We're just super into Christmas, and we're super excited to be here. We can't wait for Christmas morning. But maybe others of us, are feeling some, some grief tonight or some sadness, or, or maybe some of us are not quite sure why we're here, or, or maybe it's just a mixture of a lot of different things. Whatever brings you here tonight, whatever you bring to this hour, we're grateful that you're here. And, uh, and your presence tonight is, is a gift, it is holy, and we pray the Lord's richest blessings on you tonight. Tonight, I... Um, I'm grateful to get to share in a few moments of, of reflection on our Christmas uh, story with us. And, and I want to begin uh, with a, a question, a question to ponder. And, um, and the question is this, uh, what was Jesus' very first miracle? What would you say was Jesus' very first miracle? Now, a lot of Bible scholars, and in fact, the Gospel of John itself, will say that Jesus' very first miracle was turning Water into wine. Remember this? Water into wine. When Jesus was attending a wedding uh, in a city called Cana in the land of Galilee. If you want to read more about it, you can find out uh, about Jesus turning the water into wine in John chapter 2. And that's a great answer for Jesus' very first miracle. But what I'd like to suggest is that the Bible teaches us that, that Jesus actually performed a, a miracle much earlier than that. In fact, 
on, on Jesus' very first day on earth, right? Before Jesus even turned one day old, Jesus performed a miraculous feat that was just as amazing and had much longer lasting consequences than turning the water into wine. After Jesus was born, what was Jesus' very first miracle, that very first Christmas Day. I invite us to ponder that, think that over. We're going to we're going to come back around to it uh, later on in a few moments. But before we do, I'd like to ask you if you would to please pray with me as we prepare for our scripture. Oh God, we give you thanks for the gift of this holy night. We thank you for scripture that that seeks to find words that express what the mystery and the joy and the hope of this night is, is all about. How this night changes all things. Help us in these moments together, O oh Lord, to, to have a special sense of, of your presence in our world, in our lives, and binding us together in your family of faith. Come, Lord Jesus. Be born anew into our world and into our hearts. We pray through your Holy Spirit. Amen. So our scripture reading for tonight, as it is on every Christmas Eve, is Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. I invite us to stand as we're able for the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and, and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. So friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So if you've been here over the last month or so, you may remember that in preparation for Christmas, we've been journeying through this series called Campbell at the Movies Christmas Edition. We've been taking a look, thinking about different Christmas movies, and asking what they may have to teach us in terms of getting ready for Christmas, in terms of um, welcoming Christ and following Jesus today. We've seen a, a lot of great movies, talked about a lot of great movies, but we've saved... Uh, 
one of the most beloved for tonight, for Christmas Eve night. Tonight we're going to be briefly considering It's a Wonderful Life, uh, which came out in 1946. And, and which, It's a Wonderful Life, of course, you know, tops all sorts of lists. It, it is a, an almost universally uh, beloved Christmas uh, film. And, and for good reason. There are a lot of things that, that set It's a Wonderful Life uh, apart from other films, including some technical stuff in the special effects department, if you will believe it. Did you know that, that It's a Wonderful Life is actually considered a, a pioneering film in terms of, of the special effects surrounding fake snow? Fake snow. If you've seen It's a Wonderful Life, you know there's a lot of fake snow, right? It's kind of blowing everywhere. They're on the bridge and George Bailey and all of that. And, and the fake snow was actually a, a pretty cutting-edge technology that they developed just for It's a Wonderful Life, that the special effect artists behind It's a Wonderful Life um, figured out this way to make fake snow using a kind of soap, right, so that it would snow, but then it would dissolve, and it would be a lot easier to clean up. It was a, a great improvement over other types of substances that special effects artists used to create fake snow in movies before It's a Wonderful Life. Anybody want to guess what they used for fake snow before It's a Wonderful Life? Asbestos. Asbestos. Not a great idea. But not just asbestos, they did other things too, right? They also used potato flakes. Potato flakes in movies before It's a Wonderful Life. And my personal favorite, cornflakes, right? Cornflakes, because remember, all the movies were in black and white back then, right? So they couldn't tell that the snowflakes were strangely tan, right, as they were, as they were falling. By the way, the, the, the cornflakes were so loud, they said that they would like crunch on the actors, and the actors would crunch and they were walking around. They would have to, to, uh, uh, to, to re-record a lot of their audio because, you know, that crunchy snowflake uh, snow, right? So anyway, um, that, that's one reason that It's a Wonderful Life is remembered today. It is a pioneering film in terms of fake snow technology. But of course, that's probably not why most of us remember it. We remember it today because it is a deeply inspiring film. In fact, the American Film Institute named it as the number one inspirational movie of all time. Which, of course, then begs the question, what makes it so inspiring? Well, some might say that the inspiring message of It's a Wonderful Life is that, that one life can make more of a difference than we will ever know. Right? If you've seen the movie, you know this is a major theme of the movie already. Um, if you haven't seen it, that's okay, too. It, it tells the story of this man here, George Bailey. George Bailey comes to a point in his life where he feels like he's let everybody down who loves him and depends on him. He feels like uh, he hasn't done any good in the world. He feels like, uh, like his life hasn't made a difference. Right? And so God sends this, this angel, Clarence, to open George Bailey's eyes and, and see that his life really is, 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 is a gift to other people and that his life has made a difference. In others, and it's it's a nice message, right? It's an inspiring message. But I don't believe that's the most inspiring message of "It's a Wonderful Life" for our purposes tonight, for the purposes of, of Christmas Eve and thinking about the meaning of this night. Instead, I think that the more inspirational message comes at at the end of the movie. Do you remember the end of the movie? At the end of "It's a Wonderful Life," the the, the town throws this kind of impromptu party, right, at George Bailey's house, and 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 they're there for him to support him. And they say in not so many words, George, we are glad that you are here and we are glad that you're in the world. And George, we, we love you and we care for you and support you. And, and George Bailey, you're not alone. You're, you're not alone. You've got all of these people that you're connected to. You're not alone. And that I believe is the most inspirational message of the movie that relates to what we're doing here tonight. Because isn't that, in large part, the message of this night too? That you, and I, and everyone on this little blue marble that's spinning through space, none of us is alone. The message of, of this night isn't about how one life can make a difference, at least talking about our lives. I mean, you know, that may be true, but frankly, that seems like a lot of pressure, 
on Christmas Eve, right? And, and plus, it makes the message of tonight about each of us individually. The message of Christmas Eve is not about each of us individually. The message of Christmas Eve is about God and what God is doing in the world for you and for me and for us to let us know that we are not alone. Even if it feels like we've let down everyone around us, even if we've wondered what significance our life has, none of that matters. We're not alone. And that's the message of the, of the angel, right, to the shepherds. The angel says to the shepherds, to you is born this day a Savior who is the Messiah, who is the Lord. And frankly, the shepherds had good reason to feel kind of alone, right? Most shepherds back in Bible times, they were, they were young, unmarried, single men who would live out in the wilderness for, for extended periods of time, right? Day and night, just spending out there in the wilderness, far away from everybody, taking care of the sheep. It was a lonely job. And, and the angel comes to these, these shepherds in their loneliness and, and says, I, I've got this great news for you tonight. Tonight, there's, there's someone who's born for you. A Savior, a Lord, a Messiah, this one in whom heaven and earth meet. And you're not alone. Right? That's how much God cares for you. And what do the shepherds do when they hear this? Well, you know, of course, they, they run into Jerusalem, to, I mean, Bethlehem, to find Mary and Joseph and, and Jesus. And, and, you know, Mary and Joseph, they, they, they were probably feeling pretty lonely that night, too. Remember that Mary and Joseph were from a different part of the country. They were from, from northern Israel, right? They were from, I don't know, New Hampshire, Vermont, New York, something like that, right? And, and they were traveling down south for the, for the taxes, for the registration. So they were like, I don't know, Georgia, Florida, or something like that, right? They were in this different part of the country. So they really didn't know that many people. They were feeling kind of out of place and alone and passing through. And these shepherds come and find them after they just after Mary's just given birth to, to Jesus, and, and they and they, they celebrate Jesus' birth and talk about what the angel said. And it's this great time, right? Except I also have to imagine that it's it probably would have felt a little awkward too. I mean, I mean, think about this. This is a this is kind of a motley crew that has come together that night, right? People from different parts of the country, different backgrounds, who really didn't know each other, and they could talk about how great things are for a little bit, but then, you know, what do you talk about, right? It'd be like as if there were a family in the hospital today, right? And the mom just gave birth to the baby, and everyone's so excited, and then all of a sudden, a bunch of, you know, strangers stop in the the maternity ward and say, "Hey, we're here to." Celebrate your baby. We were, I don't know, eating at Zaxby's and put down our Zalads so we could come and celebrate with you, right? And that sounds great, but then what do you say? It's kind of, you know, it feels awkward. What do you talk about with these people? And yet that's the power of this child, right? The power of this Christ child born that night brings together these different people who would not have had anything in common with each other otherwise. These, these people who may have felt very, very alone and probably did feel very, very alone in their various places of life. Jesus brought them together and made them this kind of, this kind of community, this kind of family of faith for that night. Right? So that still today, 2,000 years later, we remember them together. And my friends, in my book, that's a pretty miraculous feat. In my book, that qualifies as... As a miracle, right? What if Jesus' very first miracle that first Christmas day was to bring people together? People who had no reason to be together. People who had every reason in the world to think that they were alone, to think that they were isolated, to think that they were cut off. What if Jesus' very first miracle that very first day was to bring people together and to say, you're not alone? That's the power of that Christ child. What if Jesus' very first miracle wasn't to turn water into wine? What if it wasn't to heal people? What if it wasn't to, to raise the dead? All of that comes later. What if Jesus' very first miracle was to bring people together and to tell them that in the name of Jesus Christ, they're not alone. 
that you're not alone. That's what this life's about. And so, you know, maybe, maybe you might be feeling tonight lonely or alone or misunderstood or overlooked. God's message for you tonight is, I, I, I love you so much. I care for you so much. I, I want to be a part of your world. I want to be a part of your life. I want to be like you. Maybe you're feeling, I don't know, uh, angry about something or disillusioned about something. Maybe I'm feeling angry about something or disillusioned about something. Maybe we're, we're, we're feeling just uh, upset and cut off and we don't know what the future is going to be like. The message of the angels tonight, the message of God for you tonight is, I love you so much, I care for you so much that I want to be a part of your world. I want to be a part of your life. I want to be like you. And if we need evidence of that, just consider this child, right? My, uh, my supreme promise. God says, of my desire to be a part of your life, of our lives. So that we're not alone. Ever. So that, that child, Jesus, he, he would grow up to, to perform all sorts of other miracles later on in life, the fish and the loaves and, and healing and raising the dead and all of that. But it began with the miracle that Christ performed on that his very first day to bring people together. That was, in some ways, the basis of everything that came after. So that you and I, everyone who would come after, might know that in this universe, in this world, in our lives, none of us. None of us, none of us, by the grace of God, are ever truly alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. We're grateful for the gift of the Lord to us this night in the birth of Jesus Christ. And we are invited to, to experience that in different ways and to respond to that in different ways. And so I want to invite us now into um, some moments of, of communion, of Holy Communion. Because, you know, saying that, you know, God loves us and, and Christ is there for us and we're never alone, that's all fine and good, right? But that can sound um, like something that um, uh, makes sense to our minds, but then it kind of maybe flips away, at least if your mind is, is like me. You know what would help? What would help? would be something that we could, could grab hold of, something that we could, could touch and feel and taste, that we could taste God's love with us and Christ's presence with us always. And, and that's what this meal is about. This meal is, is about Christ's promise to us in, in flesh and blood, in, in, in bread and juice, to be a part of our lives forever. In a moment, we're going to be invited to come forward and receive communion. Uh, as the ushers of this you're welcome to come down whatever aisle is nearest to you. And Pastor Rachel and I uh, will be waiting for you here at the, at the front. We're going to start with the two middle sections. You all be first, and then we'll move out to, to the outside. Um, and to receive communion today, tonight, uh, what we'd ask is that when you come forward uh, to receive communion, please just put your hands out like this, one hand over another, and then we will tear off a piece of the bread. And we'll put the bread in your hands. Now don't worry, we're going to be like sanitizing our hands and everything. We'll be nice, nice germ free. And then after receiving communion, you are invited to come around the altar rail. And on the altar rail, you will find their individual cups of juice. And uh, you simply take a cup, peel off the lid, and drink the juice. And then if you would, uh, put the uh, used uh, juice containers in um, the baskets that you'll find around the altar area. Um, you're also welcome to kneel around the altar as you receive juice, if you wish, but you certainly don't, don't have to do that. When we come forward to receive communion, that will also give you the opportunity to give our offering for tonight. You see there are three baskets here at the front of each 
aisle. We're invited to give our, our regular uh, Christmas offering, our, our regular general offering, uh, but also invited to give an above and beyond special gift uh, to support our church's partnership with Rainbow Network, uh, which supports communities in Nicaragua. Our sister community is Monte Cristo. I think I heard as of tonight, we're about $2,000, and I think we can double that tonight. Um, I, I, I believe we can. So if you'd like to give a special above and beyond gift to Nicaragua, uh, Monte Cristo, please just put that in a separate envelope and mark Rainbow Network or Monte Cristo or Nicaragua on the, uh, on the outside of that. And so, we remember that night a long time ago when Christ first took a loaf of bread. And Christ broke the bread. Gave thanks to God for it. And gave the bread to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body that's broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, when the supper was over, Christ took the cup. He gave thanks to God for it, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so that's what we do in remembrance of God's mighty acts in Jesus Christ for us this evening. We offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union of Christ's offering for us. We ask God to make us one with each other, one with Christ, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes and we feast at his heavenly banquet. And we ask God to pour out the Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and juice that they may be for us, the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, which we invite them. And all God's people said, Amen. The meal is ready. The invitation has been offered. Uh, as uh, you're dismissed by the ushers, if you so wish, uh, will you come to the Lord's Feast and to share in our offering um, as well? And I forgot to mention, as I should mention every time, of course, the offering and the communion are not connected. You don't have to give offering to receive communion. Communion is free to all, but you are invited and welcome to do so. Let's worship God uh, around the communion table.
we'll be closing our service uh, this evening with uh, singing Silent Night by Candlelight. And so Pastor Daniel and I will take the light from the Christ candle. And we will carry that light out to you, and you will then pass it among yourselves. And so the way that we will will do that this is if you are the one who is receiving the light, you tip your candle. If you are the one who has a lit candle, hold it straight up and down, so that way we don't drip wax on each other. Um, and so that is how we will pass the light. Um, Know that when Bill Ed will be singing our first uh, verse of Silent Night, he will sing it in Spanish as a way of honoring and recognizing our partnership with the Monte Cristo community. And then after that, we will all uh, sing Silent Night together as we pass the light of Christ among each other. And so with that, I invite you to stand as you are able and in body and in spirit, seeing a silent night. Jesus, Lord, 
with my burden. Jesus, Lord, became flesh, dwelt among us, and the light shines in the world, and nothing shall overcome. Merry Christmas. <laughs>